the long top tens here. It's easy to point to large uracolites, like trees or animals, to illustrate the kind of complexity that can occur in living things. Yet the huge portion of eucharites is actually macroscopic, which means you can't really see it. Right? The conditions of a microscopic world produce creatures of stunning in interest, Casey. Um, I think that's how you say. Ironically, it is a lack of complexity on the part of your own eyes that keeps us from seeing it. So anyway, here are the 10 incredibly intricate microscopic organisms that will blow your mind once hearing this, okay? So, number 10, we start off with radiolarins, alright? Now, radiolarins are actually a type of, like, they're humble single-celled, right? That means they only have one cell. That is renewed for its ability to form intricate skeletons with radio symmetry. Their spiny snowflake-like armor is made from lattices, um, lattices of apolline silica and features structural complexity bordering on the and uh, all right on the anomalous oh let's say all right anyway radio larynx of this kind have existed for at least 600 million years and sli slightly simpler variants existed long before them guys now influential biologist and illustrator Ernest Hackel spent years do documenting thousands of radio learned forms. In the late 19th century, he published a series of accurate and therefore painstakingly detailed illustrations of them in the hopes of popularizing the theory of evolution as an explanation for the complexity of organisms. Number 9. Diatoms. Now, like radio larynx, algae known as diatoms form a silica shell around themselves. Diatom shells, known as fruit styles, feature circular or near bilateral symmetry and come in a much wider array of shapes. Though not perfectly symmetrical, the fruit style can be very elaborate. The lack of symmetry has some benefit, however. The smaller half fits snugly into the larger one, like a lid on a box, for example or like a lid on a container, something like that. Now, unlike radio larynx, which are... Hang on, guys. Let me figure out what's going on here. Okay. Sorry, guys. That was just some noise. All right. Now, unlike radio larynx, which are predatorily, but must rely on symbiotic algae during food shortages, diatoms are entirely photosynthetic. Diatoms also have a robust eurocycle, which are otherwise unique to animals. Now, this feature allows them to make use of carbon and nitrogen more efficiently, and may explain why diatoms exist in such huge numbers today. Now, due to their ability to easily manufacture such a wide range of microstructures, it's been proposed that diatoms could be modified to mass-produce nanoscale components for human engineers out there. Number 8. Cope pods. Now these crustaceans are so tiny that they could simply absorb oxygen. They have no need for a heart or a circulatory system, yet they have a remarkably well-organized myelin-based nervous system, a trait previously thought to be exclusive to invertebrates out there. Their specialized neutral pathways give them aerobic um, abilities that aren't really seen anywhere else in the animal kingdom. Proportionally speaking, the copod is technically the world's fastest and strongest animal, at less than 0 0.04 inches in size, or less than a millimeter. All right. Now, they're capable of traveling up to 1.6 feet per second, or half of a meter, within a few thousandths of a second. This is a feat of mechanical efficiency not yet achieved by any man-made motor. Now, copepods also have buoyancy control, a trait also seen in whales. During the winter, copepods will dis excuse me, 
descend to deeper parts of the ocean to hibernate. In response to increased water pressure, their bodies began converting portions of stored oils into denser solids. With some adjustments, they're able to remain at their preferred depth without sinking or rising too much. All right, number seven, dino flyglet jets. I think that's how you say. All right, anyway, these single called protists are so small that they live symbiotic symbiotically within two other organisms found on this list, radiolarns and forums, which I will mention later on. Despite this, dinoflagellates boast some pretty advanced features and are notoriously deadly, in large numbers, I should say deadly, if I said that wrong. Now, whenever they're not busy leaving swaths of golden carnage behind them in the form of red tides, Donald Flaggates are puzzling geneticists with their bizarre genomes. The Dino Flaggates gnome is, well, that contains a baffling amount of genetic information despite its very tiny size, alright? Now, to be specific, one Dino Flaggate nucleus contains as much as 250 picograms of DNA per cell. A human nucleus contains a mere 3.2 picograms. Strangely, stranger still, some dinoflagellate species have nuclei that are triangular, tetragonical, kidney-shaped, or even U-shaped. Number six, enterobacteria paid, um, phage T4. Now, phage T4 is a type of virus that has provided us with a wealth of info on genetics. It synthesizes some of the most complex particles seen in molecular biology and has become sort of celebrity specimen due to its instantly recognizable structure. The T4 is distantly mechanical and bears a striking resemblance to NASA's moon landing modules. Its head, a polyhedron with 20 faces, it is carried on top a long rod that is structurally similar to the pop line of an oil rig. Its tolerant upper body is stabilized by a base plate, which serves as a nerve center and hub for several stilt-like fibers that can act as legs or even flagi, for example. This lower portion exhibits six-fold symmetry and is similar in appearance to insect and arachnid morphology. Alright, just think about it. Number five. Esporolycus tenarphagus. Alright. I don't think I said that right, but you got know me. All right. In 2014, atomologist Samuel Bolton discovered a new bizarre species of mite outside the main campus of Ohio State University. Described as both dragon-like and worm-like, it's strange enough to warn the creation of a whole new genus. The mite's long, soft body is covered in escoate arrays of interlocking ridges and scales. Its mouth parts are also distinct, with three segmented pitops, arm-like appendages below the jaws, tipped with claws. Yeah. The tenophagus in its scientific name refers to its ability to tenderly pick up and manipulate the delicate microbes on which it feeds. The evolutionary history behind its way of moving is a mystery. Now, using hydraulic pressure, its body stretches and contracts in an accordion-like motion to maneuver through microscopic gaps. It can also be found living in the cramped spaces between grains of soil, avoiding other forms of life as much as possible. This includes members of its own species. All right, now, only females have been found and they're capable of reproducing sexually. All right. Number four, forearms. All right. So, sometimes living symbiotically with algae, tens of thousands of these little amoebas can be found in 11 foot or 11 square feet of ocean or one square meter of ocean. Now, the name for a minifia, that means hull bearer, all right? Now, in reference to the series of tubes, of tubes connecting the chambers of the shells they make. Now, these creations called tests are miniature superstructures, despite being less than a millimeter in size. 
A form's test can be as simple as a few fused spheres or cathedral-like with countless wind and chambers and arches hidden within. Now, forms are also, also grow on uh, fusopodia, which are temporary fibrous growths seen in other unicellular protests. All right, now, forearms, however, they will combine their pseudopodia into living nets that capture their prey. The growths making up the nest are hollow, and they can act as a rudimentary sacrament, um, excuse me, circulatory system, all right? Number three. We go on to number three with Lori Cypherance. All right. <clears throat> now, you may never heard this one before. Just remember that, all right? So, referred to as Masters of Miniaturization. Now, Lori Cypherance are multicellular animals, now the size of most single celled ones, a set of about 10,000 specially specialized cells allows them to have a disproportionality complex body. A luciferin's body also contains adorably small scale versions of parts seen in larger animals, including a brain, digestive and excretory systems, specialized appendages, sense organs, uh, musculate, uh, uh, let's see here, musculature and locomotory functions, separate sexes, and a protective external cuticle. Now, sensory spines called scallops blossom also like, a, like, scallops, they blossom like a bou bouquet from its vase-shaped body. At the center of this spiny crown is a mouth cone that unfolds and emerges from the animal like a telescope, all right? Now, luciferans are also the only known multicellular animals that can live and reproduce exclusively in oxygen-free environments in the place of mitochondria, which are required, which they require oxygen to produce energy. Now, luciferans also have their own unique organelles that operate anaerobically. All right, so, number two. We go into number two with rotifers. All right, now rotifers are also called wheel animals and are common microorganisms famous for their bizarre mouth parts. Very bizarre, like, Probably more bizarre than that. Now, in front, two rings of cilia beat in synchronized motions to sweep food into the mouth. Behind these rotary organs lies a set of bony, highly um, arculated jaws. All right. Now, a rotifer's jaws are just as intricate as zoologist Dr. Ross Piper puts it for an animal so small and with only around a thousand cells in its entire body. This structure is amazingly complex in the establishment of muscles, ligaments, and tooth plates, or trophy, all working together to macerate the food before it's being digested. Alright guys, we finally go into number one with the Cocolithopores. Alright. Now, this object ain't made from plastic or metal, but it's from calcium carbonate. Known as a calcolith, this semi-organic structure is one of many kinds produced by single-celled algae called calcolithopores. Alright, now, Broadrotospiro, um, Bigeloi, I don't think I said that right, that's a pentagonal species, uh, that, that is gold, that is, uh, pictured above this list first thing that I'm apparently reading, alright? So, you don't have to really... You could just type all that in, alright? And then they'll give you the pentagonal species shown, alright? Now, believe it or not, guys, that's actually perfectly formed. Almost as though it looks like factory mate. Twelve will cleave together to form a seamless dodecophorate about five microns in size. Now, cocolithopores produce nanoliths in a variety of shapes. Most demonstrate unusual structure strength thanks to a series of interlocking crystals support each face. Now, the central cell that creates this scaffolding is extremely precise. Each face starts out as a ring of calcite crystal, which is systematically grown from certain points so that the resultant framework meets to, a, to form a symmetrical prism. Now, the finished product is much larger than the algae itself. For a human, producing some organically in one goat would be like giving birth to a car wheel, right? 
Okay guys, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.